Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Serratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Serratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all episodes of Consciousness Unleashed. And today, uh, we're going to have a great episode for you today. Since it is April, um, we do want to talk about sin, the concept of sin, and we're going to get into uh, the realm, the hell realm, because, you know, Easter, it's a relevant topic right now. Also taxes, which is a sin, in my opinion. So this is <laughs> this is a perfect uh, topic for us to talk about today. And it's been something I've wanted to bring up a few times in like in, in podcast episodes. It was one of the topics I thought of um, that would be really cool to talk about because we are going to talk about hell and whether or not it's real and these different types of realms. Maybe you'll even get into the concept of heaven too or something. We don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes in today's episode. Anything could go because it, it's, it's going to be a sinfully delightful episode today, right, Bonnie? That's right. <laughs> All right. Yes. <laughs> so, and I do want to mention too, you do have a group clearing coming up called Feeling Like a Sinner. And that definitely stay tuned to the end of the episode because I'm going to share some links for you. We have special packages for April that's around sin and uh, the traumas that some people might have from certain religions and, and the, the dogmatic religions that people grow up in sometimes they have a lot of trauma. So do we have packages around that that will help you to clear those issues? So Bonnie, um, you know, this is a pretty big topic when I was thinking about what, you know, what are some of the things we could talk about today? And um, let's just, let's just get into this. So uh, my first question is, is there anything that is innately sinful or innately like bad? Um, and from what perspective are you coming from when you when you answer this question? I, I ask this because I know a lot of people who might watch this because I might title it a certain way where new people will find this and they, they don't know who you are. They Some people might be very religious who find this episode. So um, what perspective are you coming from when you're answering this question? So is there anything innately sinful? Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's good that we're going to clarify. Okay. So in my world, so to speak, I have awarenesses because I've been tracking energy my entire life. I've been to many, many different places in the world and I've been downloaded. And I, when I was in Israel, I was there a month each time for three, three times, you know, I was downloaded, saw, given information, whatever. So um, being someone who's been truly seeking, asking, I'm coming from a much higher consciousness higher level consciousness. I'm coming from the place of who are we really? What is the soul's journey? What are we doing? What are we waking up to? What is our purpose? All of that. Okay. Now, if we dummy it down into the, the belief systems of humanity, where people are not truly seeking, where they're buying into belief systems, then of course they're going to buy into all of the, the religions and people's fears and people's misperceptions and beliefs and conclusions that have, have been going on for eons of time. So when we look at, at life and we look at humans, we look at the soul evolving. That's the perspective I'm coming from. So from that perspective, there is no good, bad, right, wrong. Okay. It's, all about the soul waking up, the soul evolving, the soul to know itself in all ways. The intention is for the soul to go back into the oneness, what we call God, okay? So if you think about the original separation from creation, we look at um, the, the frequency of what creation is, which is pure awareness. It does not have emotion. It doesn't have beliefs. It is not a human, okay? It is a consciousness that is everything in that consciousness as souls developed or souls were created what happened was there was a uh, the waking up and having the awareness of your own awareness in that began the initial separation where we began to feel oh we are separate i'm no longer in the oneness of all existence so the journey that we're doing now is to go back into that oneness and in order to do that we have to know ourselves in all ways, which is creation. So if you look at life, you look at the world, you look at humans, you look at 
existence itself. You look at the plant, everything is creation. There is nothing but that, okay? So humans, of course, we're, it's like an evolution evolving. You know, when, when you look at the planet, when you look at science, you know that the planet was not just all of a sudden, boom, here's planet Earth. It was created and developed over trillions of years, okay? And life form began, and that life form brought us to where we are right here, right now. But it's still all about the soul. It's about the soul waking up. So in my knowing, my reality, my consciousness, which is pretty darn awake, there, everything we do is to learn, uh, to learn, to grow, to expand, to end our own suffering. So the problem lies in that we forget every time we come into a body and we have all these past lives of traumas and horrors and, and experiences that we've all had of things that cause us to feel like we're not important, we're not enough, we don't belong, we're not wanted, we're not loved. All these pieces that we, you know, experiences that create these energies in our subconscious that, that don't get cleared out, we carry it over to the next one. This is why we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes and we're still doing the same old, same old, okay? Because there's not been te higher consciousness teachings. There's been no roadmap. There's been no you know, way for people to understand what is the soul doing here? What are we doing? What is this really all about, okay? So in the soul's evolution in past lives, if I just play with just me and Cynthia, <laughs> Cynthia, <laughs> so in playing just looking at our connection, our lives, our past lives, we've had lots of different soul dances together. And here we are again. And I don't know the full reason or purpose just yet, but there's we have drawn together for 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 unraveling to heal old past lives, to to open our hearts even more, to expand in consciousness. So in our soul dance, you know, we could have past lives where Maybe I abandoned her. Maybe I killed her. Well, she's going to do the same to me. People like to label that as karma. But what's happening is we, we want to know ourselves in our way. So whatever I've done, I'm going to know myself in the opposite. And, and it may not even be with the same person that harm was done to or came from. But it will, we will still be doing things, experiencing things so that we have the, the understanding and the direct experience of uh, of. Um, what it feels like, what it is like to be on both sides. So when we look at life and we look at heaven, we look at hell, we look at all the different belief systems that people have, here's the thing. Everyone has co-created these energy frequencies <clears throat> so that now we actually do have these places. They're, they're not here in this dimension. They're in another dimension time space where people do have a belief that, oh, there's heaven. Oh, there's hell. Oh, and then all the different cultures, you know, Buddhism and Taoism and um, the uh, Muhammad, you know, the different uh, the, the belief systems of different cultures. Everyone has their own. And they created their own heavens, hells, and purgatories or whatever their belief systems are, okay? And I remember back, this was way the heck back, this was back in the 80s when I was teaching psychic classes, we were, had gone on a trip, uh, a camping trip, and uh, we were staying in an area where there was ocean and then in the uh, back inside were trees and uh, teaching and showing the, my students. And we took them into these places of heaven and hell and, and the dead zone and uh, different places where people will go when they die because of a belief system. And they could clearly see, oh, this is beliefs. And so people do come out of those places in time, sometimes faster than others, but you know, it's those belief systems that we've all co-created. So, uh, you know, we, we hold these beliefs and then oftentimes when people pass, they die, then they see the light or but they have a belief system. So they're going to go into that belief system, whatever that is. For example, the dead zone, I call it the dead zone. People who believe that nothing happens after you die. Game over, nothing. That's it. So as far as the eye can see in these altered states, you see bodies laying as though they're dead. Okay, these are the people who believe nothing happens after you die, all right? And then you see the heaven thing where people are in their belief systems of what heaven looks like, what it is. You have the belief system of hell. You people go to hell and they're suffering. And pretty soon they start waking up and then they 
you know, go back, up, they go into the true light and then there's reincarnation happening. And just so you know, too, aspects of you can stay stuck in certain time space dimensions um, and stay in, in some kind of torture, you know, retrieving people from these tortured places. So it's like, all of the belief systems that people have, we have co-created, okay? But coming back to, is there really a good, bad, right, wrong? Is there really sin? In the human belief systems, of course, everything's a sin. You're bad, you're bad, you do this, you think that, you're evil, you're wrong, there's something wrong with you, okay? That's all human belief systems. In the higher realms, the higher echelons, the consciousness, higher consciousness, there is no good, bad, right, wrong. There is no sin. It just doesn't exist. All that's happening is the soul is knowing itself in every way it possibly can to know itself as creation. Because again, everything is creation. Every experience is what creation is experiencing it. But as a soul, an individual being that we are, separate from, in some way, separate from the all that is, we need to discover, we need to know who are we in the face of traumas and, and crisis and devastation? Who are we in the face of love and lightness and, and abundance and, and cherishing and, you know, the good stuff? But also, who are we when it comes to, you know, hurting each other, harming each other? So it's all about the self. It's all about the soul waking up. It's all about the soul's journey into itself and clearing and releasing and letting go of what is not the absolute, okay? So the absolute is pure, unconditional love and light. That is the absolute. It's also the darkest of dark and the evilest of evil. That too is still the absolute. There's nothing but that. And people want to make things like about, like that's happening out there. The devil made me do it. Somebody else is making me do these things. I don't do that. Well, that simply is not true, okay? We are co-creating, we are doing what we do. And if you start really telling yourself the truth and you start looking within, you're gonna find that, oh yeah, I had this feeling, I wanted to hurt that person. Oh, I wanted revenge. Oh, I wanted to punish. Oh, I got really mad, I could have killed that person. If you really look deep, you're gonna find all these emotions because we are all of the emotions, the lightest of light, the most loved, powerful love to the darkest of evilest thoughts and feelings and actions and behaviors. We played it out many times with each other. The good news is we're coming into a new paradigm. That means, ah, old ways are done, been there, done that. We've done enough atrocities. We've experienced enough horrors. Now it's time to let's just really open up and start to know what love really is in a way we've not done before on planet Earth. So again, no good, bad, right, wrong. Sorry. So, Bonnie, you brought up a lot of concepts. I do want to touch upon some of them, but uh, before I go into uh, more questions about hell, I do want to ask you about um, when you track the energy of like the concept of sin and how it kind of became in humanity, like what do you actually see? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it depends on how far back I go. Okay, so if I go, civilization has collapsed several times, okay, but if I go back, if I go back to the most, where we are now in this particular evolution that we're in, I, mean, I go all, all the way back to like um, um, Neanderthal or the, the humans that we, that we were when we, begin, when we started becoming more, um, more emotional meaning, okay? So if you even look at critters or animals or you look at um, the different evolution of of um, like um, the bodies that we had, the form that we had. And it's, it's all about survival. So, you know, life is about survival, unfortunately, but it is. So in that survival is where we really began to like, let's just say, let's move forward into where we actually had humans, we had clans, we had groups of peoples being together. So of course that meant survival. So when you come across another clan, most likely the what I'm seeing is it was about, you know, the, the survival. They're coming into your space or you're going into their space. It's survival. So people began to kill each other or hurt each other um, in that survival mode. And then as we continue to evolve, more becoming more and more aware, more and more becoming of um, 
where we began rather than hunter gatherers, you begin to land, you know what I mean? Like far not farming, but growing things or where where people began to gather, larger groups of people began to gather. And then there then all the emotional stuff starts to happen. There wasn't any kind of belief systems like we have now, but as we move forward, as I move forward in time, as I come in, like even when we look at some of the older plate, like in, in Egypt, okay, Egypt, they know that there's, you know, the the temples and the uh, pyramids, and that somehow there's some kind of greatness that's happened in in those time periods. But basically, it's all, what really happens is humans in power, okay, this is the, herein lies the problem. You put one human in power or just a couple of people in power, then they wanna have power and control over other and then begin to create belief systems that simply are not true and real. And just stepping back a little bit, if anybody wants to really you know, do research, you can find that uh, even the Bible, what, what was created, what was built, or not built, sorry, what was written, it was a group of men and there's all the scrolls, there's all the writings, there's a, you know, like a room full of information. So they extracted what they wanted from hundreds of pieces of information, written scrolls, all kinds of stuff. And one of the things that they wanted to make sure you did not have was the knowing that you create your reality 100%, because if they gave that to you, you would be empowered, okay? So instead it becomes more around sinful you have a desire you have a thought you know, you're a sinner you're bad so belief systems were created by man and and then you know the more uh survival issues come up the threat again it's really about survival power over greed got created and developed and began to grow within humans uh because of the survival mechanism the, the survival life does survival so everything grew from there. And now here we are in a world where we have many, many, many different belief systems, people hating each other, killing each other over their own belief systems. I mean, when you look at it, it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, everyone has a belief and then they're going to kill somebody else because you don't believe like they believe, okay? You know, having power over. So um, all of these systems get created, were created by man, but it was created again, just really make that clear, it really was way back. It started as survival. Then it became more of that feeling of power over because it also, it's all still about survival. If I have more, I'll live. I have more food, I'll live. I have more shelter, I'll live. You know, it's like power over. And they're not caring about other, other than your own group, your own clan, your own family, your own blood, that type of thing. And it's still, that's still true today. I mean, yes, there are people who do have care about other. And they're, you know, doing whatever they can to assist. But ultimately, most of the people, most of humanity really when it came right down to it. If it came right down to survival, they'd be, you know, it'd be all about the survival of the self and their own family, their own clan. So um, by keeping people in these belief systems, it keeps you disempowered, keeps you from taking responsibility and becoming accountable for your life. It keeps you in a victim state of consciousness. It keeps you enslaved. So as people start to wake up and realize, whoa, wait a second here, I create my reality 100%. Hmm, there must be something here that I can do to change my reality. And there is. Just remember, your reality is created through your subconscious. Whatever you believe in there, you're going to create. So if you've got all these past lives where you're believing that you did horrendous crimes, you did atrocities, you hurt people, you're going to have a belief in there you deserve to suffer, you deserve to be punished. Um, if you've done hurtful, harmful things, you can conclude that, oh, there's something wrong with you. You're bad. Uh, you're a sinner. You know, so it's all these beliefs and you hold this in your subconscious and then you create a reality. It's like, oh, no, no abundance, no money, no good relationship, suffering. Gee, I'm a victim. Look what's happening to me. Oh, God is punishing me. Not. You are creating your reality 100%. Time to wake up to that, okay? The new paradigm is happening. It's time for you to realize and understand you're not a victim, okay? You're a co-creator. You call these experiences in so you can know yourself in them and clear and heal and wake wake up, okay? But that's not what's happening. People still want to be the victim, the poor me. There's an attachment to people's perverse um, 
there's a pleasure in one's suffering, perverse pleasure in one's suffering. If you start paying attention, looking at it, you'll discover, oh yeah, it feels so good to feel so bad, okay? So again, it's really about waking up. It's really about what do you really want to do with your life? Do you want to wake up or do you want to continue being the victim and, and playing the blame game and finding fault and judging other and creating even more separation, okay? Because we end separation when we no longer are finding fault and judging other, when we start to wake up to, oh, I do create my reality. I'm creating it through my subconscious. Hmm, maybe I might want to look at what are my belief systems here? If I am living in lack, if I am living in fear, or if I'm living in loneliness and aloneness and you know all those deep emotions that we experience and we want to make it about somebody else, somebody else's fault. Sorry. It's not. I'm going to tell it straight up. You create your reality 100%. You are a divine being, creator incarnate. You are evolving and waking up. And that is an absolute truth. Absolute. So, Bonnie, earlier you talked about how you took some students to various realms and different dimensions, including heaven, the dead zone, hell. And so I, I do want to ask, because sometimes I hear you in your clearings and even some of your accelerators, um, they they take their awareness to the underworld and they may, may, might make a trade with a being who is holding a piece of a person's soul and you're trying to get that back so that that person could have that more wholeness within them and have that healing. So when you say the underworld, are you actually referring to hell? Or Because I know there's different, probably different realms. So yeah, could you yeah. just help me just yeah. <laughs> understand yeah. that? So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so in shamanism, there are the, the upper world, the middle world, and the underworld. Okay, the upper world basically really is um, all the, you know, the galactic, the energy frequencies. It includes other time, space, dimensions, that type of thing. The middle world is the earth plane where we where we live right here. And the underworld is literally under that that realm. And it goes down into um, the underground, so to speak. It's not necessarily really in the earth. And yet it has that feel, that quality that it's in the earth. So we have, um, you know, experiences in all these different places. And in the underworld, Oftentimes people will, you know, uh, people that want to go in hiding, um, they'll, uh, uh, like we have an enemy or something. And uh, let's just say for you and me, we got, we have a fight or whatever. And I grab a piece of you and I take it on down to the underworld. And I'm going to trade or do something with that piece because that has value. And, and then I can actually stay down there or I can just take you on down pieces of you to do some, whatever I need to do for my own personal gain, whatever. And, you know, the, the battle that goes on between souls, the reasons why we do these things is because the soul doesn't have these awarenesses and realizations and understandings. It's the higher levels of us that actually understand what we're doing. But these other aspects of us, we're still playing out like stupid humans, you know, and doing things and taking things and hurting people and pieces of us being taken and, and, and that type of thing. So the underworld, there's all kinds of stuff down there. Like there's... Um, there's like mega spider things, big spider creatures. There's uh, demons in there. There's tribes, peoples. There's wolves. There's caves. I mean, there's just so much down there. There's, yeah, it's all shrouded. It has lots of um, different things that are happening, different types of waters, lakes and rivers and streams. And, and parts of people can be taken and lost. Like I find people and sometimes in the lake, people have drowned. And somehow they were taken down into the underworld and they're in the in the lake and the underworld drowned okay so i mean there's just so there's just so much to um these realms these dimensions like if we go into the upper world we go into all different time space and uh, different galactic energy consciousness and and different species of beings and the places where we've been or we are scattered out throughout the galaxies universes time and space realms dimensions so I mean, it's pretty extensive. That's why in doing one's healing and doing clearing work, it's massive. We just don't know where we're going to need to go. We don't know how many fragmented pieces there are or taken or stolen pieces, lost pieces, where, you know, the uh, aspects of the person are just scattered, okay? 
So it's, you know, the, the, the journey back to the South is what we're doing. And with the new paradigm, everything is being accelerated. So we're moving towards that new paradigm. Everyone is, whether they know it or not, whether they like it or not, whether they believe it or not, it's happening. And what that means is all the darkness is going to be lifted from your subconscious and it's going to go into, you know, you're going to start just, you're going to have some pretty intense stuff to face because it's now it's time to face all of your atrocities, all the harm you have done, all the shattered and broken places, all the weaknesses, the grief, the, the despair, despondency, all the stuff in you is coming to the surface. And that's what this whole time period is about. So I would just encourage people, surrender, let go, let it happen and come out the other side much faster. So yeah, the dimensions, time, space, there's that. There's also having how all these other are not in these realms, okay? This is another, these are belief systems. Shamanism has its own belief systems. Humans have their belief systems. They all exist. Now everything's coexisting. It's all happening. So people who have the idea of if I sin, I'll go to hell, they will go to those realm, that realm. Not necess no, not no. necessarily. No, okay. no, no. Only that here's what happens. Okay. The body, when the, when you leave the body, okay, your consciousness is met by the loved ones. The light is present. Okay. But what happens is, is you're still attached to your humanness. This is why when people die, we, when we, when we alive, people see them, they're presenting as how we knew them, okay? Because when you die, you're still attached to belief systems. You're still attached that that's who you are, okay? So what happens is, is when you leave the body, again, you know, you are, and you're also shown your life. You're shown what you've done. You're shown uh, your beliefs, and you're shown what you could have done differently, all kinds of cool stuff. And... The stronger you believe something, the more you, you know, your, your fanatic, fanaticism about your belief, that's when you're going to move towards your false, false heaven, false hell, false purgatory, or whatever your beliefs are, okay? You're going to, ha you have those if they're really strong. Most of the time, people wake up to that, and they're willing to drop that the attachment to that physical body that they're still holding on to and then go into the light. And in doing so, that's when you're, you know, uh, create, recreate, uh, creating, you know, whatever you're going to be doing in your next incarnations, because you're looking back going, oh, I didn't get that part. Oh, yeah, I had an opportunity. I didn't take it. Oh, this happened. That happened. I could have done it differently. All right, I'm going to do it better next time. No, you forget. You come into the body, you forget. Okay. So, Everyone has the same opportunity, but again, it's about your belief system. Do you want to hold on to beliefs that simply aren't true and real? Go ahead. Eventually you'll wake up. Might take another 10 lifetimes, 100 lifetimes. Doesn't matter. You got eternity to wake up for real. So, you know, it may be planet Earth won't be here in, you know, a trillion years, but if you're still, if you're still, you know, playing the victim game, you know, go play it somewhere else. Okay. But eventually everyone's going to be coming home. Everyone will return to the, the oneness of the all that is pure awareness, pure consciousness, and then you know who knows what will happen after that. But right now we're we're all soul dancing, we're playing the game, we have our belief systems, and it's important to let go of all beliefs. Just let it all. It's like drop it, okay? And then when you drop it, <laughs> you start to see things completely different, okay? You start to understand that there is a divine plan unfolding and you are all a part of it. We are all a part of it. And that that is going to keep moving in a direction that just keeps waking us up. And, and you know, the ability to surrender to that is, is what will bring us more peace, more joy, more happiness. Because truly, you know, we're, we're all evolving, waking up, trying to end our suffering. But we create more suffering by our belief system. So... You know, the, this whole experience of um, the soul evolving, that's what we're doing. You know, we're waking up and everyone's in it again. Guys, must take, you want forever? Go ahead, take forever. Be a victim for forever, but eventually you will wake up. So for those who are listening right now and they're on this path, whether they're 
um, new to this path. They've been on this path for a long time of awakening and healing. And they may have these feelings of being a sinner or being bad. And this is just something they haven't been able to shake. They haven't been able to really clear or release. Um, what are some of the advice you would give them to just kind of, you know, further go into that direction of releasing this idea that they're bad or sinners? Well, someone, I mean, if someone's feeling like they're bad, okay, that, then you got to, you have belief systems. I would try to discover what are these belief systems, where are they really coming from? You can do things like, you know, um, you can do some writing, non-dominant handwriting. I'm a sinner. Where did I? Where did this come from? What did my mom think? Whatever, whatever. Okay, uh, you can start doing things where you let yourself just feeling into the belief, feeling into the emotion. What's it feel like emotionally to believe you're a sinner? Okay, see, people, it's all about the emotion. The emotion is what causes us to carry over these beliefs. It carries over the wounding. It carries over the misperceptions. It's all about the emotion. If you can go into these emotions, to the subconscious parts of these emotions, not what you're consciously aware of, what you're consciously aware of, feeling that, it's just a spin. You have to surrender completely to an emotion until you drop into another emotion that's underneath that emotion. And then you go into that emotion and have that all the way. And then you drop down into another emotion underneath that. So it's about knowing these emotions by going through them in the complete surrender. If you're still having mind thoughts, if you're tell, still telling the story, nothing's being unraveled. The true unraveling happens when you are no longer in any thought, you're in the emotion so fully that you are that emotion. You become that emotion. There's no thought. There's no, there's no mind. You are that emotion. You don't even know where you are. This is how we unravel these core emotional feelings. If you're not doing that, you're recycling, period. That's it, okay? So it's all about knowing yourself. So if you, if you believe you're bad, you believe you're a sinner, all righty then, go into it, own it, feel it, embrace it, know it, taste it, smell it, eat it. Know that feeling, die to it. And then the energy can be lifted because now the soul now understands what that feels like. If everything's creation, so is the belief that a sin is, you know, something bad, okay? Or there's a belief around the sin. All right, you got these beliefs, you got these emotions, have them, have them. And then come out the other side. So Bonnie, I do have some announcements for people so that they know um, what's coming up that will help them with this issue. So we do have, um, two packages that I want to talk about. One is a special package just for April. It's called the Religion and Sin Package. It's only available on in April, and, and that's it. So get it now. The link is in the description below. It's a special deal. There's five um, group clearings that are related to sin and religion, so um, you definitely want to get that. It's, of course, any, any package that is sold on the website is at a discounted rate. And there's also the seven deadly sins that you did many, many years ago, you did that one. So that's obviously a package of seven group clearings that Bonnie did. Um, each one is on each of the sins. So that is also available. That is something that is uh, available all the time, but I'm just bringing it up today because many people don't really know some of the packages we have. Um, there is an upcoming group clearing called Feeling Like a Sinner. That is April 12th. And um, the link is in the description below. That's also in the package that I talked about that's only available for April. So if you want to buy that one, if you want to buy all the other stuff in there, you might as well just buy the whole package and you could save money. Um, but I do want to also mention, Bonnie, that you were talking about the soul's journey and about knowing yourself. So you, you do have a program called Know Thyself that's coming up. So do you want to talk about, about that? Yes, Know Thyself is huge. It's a mega, mega wake up. Wake up. Yeah, it's like using life and understanding higher consciousness teachings and, and, and coming from a perspective of witnessing and understanding what we're really doing and then how to use our life experiences um, to unravel and clear deep emotional wounding. But there's also teachings and of higher levels of consciousness that wake you up in a way that nothing else will. It's like you start having realizations. You start to see how you 
created your life and how you maintain creating your life and and your resistances to being here, your reactions to things, your judgments and and acceptance of what is. And I mean, it just it's like a major uh, waking up, unraveling. And I mean, people are like, they're just shocked. They're astounded that what of what happens when they start to understand these higher level teachings and higher consciousness. It's a way of living our lives in a way that really allows us to really be here, embracing being in the body, loving being here, but also not attached to belief systems or outcomes or not attached to how people judge us or, you know, no, no, we start losing our, our attachments, our judgments, our misperceptions, our beliefs, we start dropping it all. And what that does is it actually literally brings us to more places of what I would call enlightenment, a state of enlightenment that we, that people, anybody who's seeking on some level is seeking to end their suffering. And they're also in, you know, there's a desire for having enlightenment and what this does, though, is it does help to end the suffering, but it does wake you up and it does liberate. It's like being liberated from within, ending our own suffering, liberated, losing our attachments, our belief systems, allowing us to be in the world in a way where we're really pure, pure, purely consciousness and awareness and, and meeting life in the moment without any preconceived or belief systems where we really are showing up in a much different way which is sharing the gift of ourselves. The heart is open. We have more love. We have more compassion. It's a profound wake up, Bram. So um, Know Thyself, you just finished up a class or you're finishing it up right now yeah. with a group mm -hmm. of students and they had yeah. many transformations too, right? And you'll be starting yeah. it up again in when? When will you May. be doing it again? May. In, in May. May, okay. Mm -hmm. And yes, everybody, if you want to learn more about everything that was talked about today and more, um, definitely know thyself is uh, the program to take for that. I know that um, I do take, I do attend your live Q and A's and the um, quantum consciousness and people ask questions. A lot of times I feel like, well, they could, should just take know thyself because a lot of the questions, mm -hmm. so they're, you would answer it in a very in-depth way there. And that mm -hmm. seems to always be something I notice um, every, almost every month of the questions that come in. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. these would just be answered in the class. And I really encourage yeah. people who have who keep going to those live Q&As to actually consider taking Know Thyself because many of those questions you have will be answered in, an, in a very in-depth way. And you will have that experience too. It's not just the no knowledge that you get from Bonnie's um, talking about it. You'll mm -hmm. actually be in a setting where there's other students, you'll be going through similar things, you'll be learning the mm -hmm. same material every month, and you'll have a safe space to share. And I do want to also say, Bonnie, that this is one of the programs that you actually still teach, because you have other programs you don't teach anymore. And this is one of them that you do. So yeah. if you want to have that yeah. personal space with Bonnie, um, definitely check out Know Thyself. It's coming up again in May. I'll leave links to I think there's a wait list right now. It's not I'm quite ready to, um, we don't have the page up for you to register yet, but if you sign up for the wait list, as soon as registration is ready, you'll be emailed. So definitely um, look into that. Links are below. Remember everything I mentioned today, all the links in the description below. And Bonnie, is there any last words or that's it? Yep, last words. Um, you know, here's the thing, everyone wants to be happy. Truly, I don't care who it is, people want to be happy. The way to find your happy is you got to face what's inside because happiness is within. Love is within. It's not out there. No one's going to give it to you. It's all about you. So you got to take charge, take responsibility. You can change your life. I guarantee it. You can change your life and you can find happiness, peace, joy, but you got to be willing to face yourself. That's the biggest challenge right there. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast. Um, if you're listening to this on YouTube, please give it a like, um, comment below, subscribe. And if you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify or any of those podcast platforms, please leave us a review. Thank you so much, Bonnie, for your time today. And thank you, everybody. Bye. <laughs>